So first we'll start with the vendor 1099 period detail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the purchasing folder here just to get started um, since that's where I'd like my new custom smart list to appear. So I'm gonna highlight purchasing and then I'll click new up here. Whenever you click new, this is essentially opening up the smart list designer. So I'll give this a, a name here. So I'll call it vendor 1099 uh, period detail. And that's what I'll see in my folder after I create this new smart list. Um, so when I'm in the smart list designer here, you have your name, um, which product, um, which basically just determines where within these folders you're gonna see this new list and the same thing with the series. So you could also, if you create a different if you select a different product here, there will be a folder that says additional smart lists and it kind of groups them up there. Otherwise, you can put them within your folders that already exist. So in this case, I'd like mine within the purchasing folder. And then it's broken out where um, you have um, over on the left here, these are all the different um, sources that you can pull from. So it's pretty much all the, the areas within GP. And if you have additional ISVs, um, or you know, like human resources, even it's kind of an additional add-on to GP or safe pay. You'll see those listed there as well. So you'll see all the different products um, that you can pull from. And then when you expand it, you see the tables that are available. And then, um, so that kind of starts up here with GP. That's where a lot of the data will be held. And then when you get to the bottom, and you get to views, this is actually where you would, if you wanted to work with a smart list that already exists in this um, section over here, you would use views. So we're gonna go through an example of that too later on. And then this is also where if you created a custom SQL view, you would uh, then see that in this view section as well. But we're gonna keep this first one simple and we're just gonna start with uh, Microsoft Dynamics GP. So I'm gonna expand this folder here. And then I'm gonna open up the tables. And in this case, um, it's in the purchasing area since this is vendor 1099 information. So I'm gonna expand that. And sometimes this takes a second just for it to open up and show you all the tables. So these are basically all the tables uh, in GP related to the purchasing module. So you can you know, pull from any of these. And um, so we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna to go to the purchasing 1099 period detail, which is right here. So if I hover over it, it does cut off, but if I hover over it, it'll tell me the full name of that table here. And I don't want everything, so I'm not gonna check this box. Instead, I'm going to expand here. And this way I can select um, you know, which fields I actually wanna pull onto my new smart list. So in this example, I wanna see my vendor ID I want to know um, my type, my year. I want to know what period the amount was in. And then I also want to know the box number. And then of course the actual 1099 amount that was posted um, to that vendor. And those are all the fields that I'd like. And you'll notice that as I marked these, they appeared over here on the right. So now it's showing me these are all my selected fields that I'm going to see on my new smart list. So at this point, um, that's all I need to do. I've created my new list. And um, if I wanted to, I could click execute query up here. If I wanted to just get like a preview of what the data looks like, and then I could still make more changes if I wanted to. Um, this relationship section will be used. Uh, we'll use that in a couple minutes. And that's basically if you need to pull additional tables. In this first example, we're just gonna pull from the one table. But if we needed to also pull from extra tables, we would have to then basically link them together. So we'd have to define a relationship between those two different tables. And that's what this section is for. And then the filter section is where you can put in um, restrictions based on all these different fields that you have on here. So if I wanted to create a smart list and I only wanted it for a certain year, you know, I could put in, um, you know, I could select year, and then I can actually restrict it to a specific year and actually have that embedded in the design of the smart list. 
Otherwise, I could just leave it um, without any restrictions. So it's going to pull all the data from the table, um, which is how I'm going to do it. And then the users could actually create favorites off of the smart list then if they wanted to, you know, if you wanted to have a favorite under here for just 2027 or just a certain period, you could then further restrict it. But then this way, the raw data isn't restricted and it will be available uh, for the users to modify. So this is um, this is all I need to do to create this first smart list. So I'll click OK here. And now you'll see that it displayed the fields that we saw in our preview. So it's showing me the type of 1099, the vendor ID, and then the 1099 amount for that actual period and the box number. So I can get um, all that detail on here pretty quickly um, and easily. And then I wouldn't have to actually go to the window to view all of that detailed information. And then you'll notice that it added it in our purchasing folder. We now have a whole new folder here called vendor 1099 period detail. And then from here, if I expand that, if I click the star, it's always going to just bring me to the default report and it's going to have all data. But if I wanted to from here, I could then create a favorite. So if I wanted to restrict it to the year 2024, I could either click here where it's showing me I have no search criteria, or I could click up here and I could go to search. And then I can actually restrict that off of here. So I would just select my year field here and then I would um, put in that restriction to 2024. And then click OK and now I'll only have that information. And then, of course, I can restrict it some more. I could tell it to only give me um, records that actually have a 1099 amount. Um, I could go in here and then use the filter is greater than, is greater than zero, and then click OK. And now I'll have a much uh, shorter list here. So now it's just showing me vendors that actually had a 1099 amount in this year. So now I can um, hit favorites up here and I could save this. So then I would um, put in, um, you know, probably the year, something to describe the filter that I just put in there. So 2024 with amounts, and then I would just add that favorite. And now within our main new folder here, we have this favorite that's always going to be set up. So then if I come back in here, I won't have to actually enter anything. When I highlight this new one, it's going to automatically have the filters built in for me, and those will be saved.